Hey everyone, Josh here at House Guitars and Canadian Luthier Supply coming to you from my shop in Goderich, Ontario, uh, Canada. And I wanted to shoot a video here um, regarding how I uh, handle the, the top radius and the rim and the neck angle. Um, I get a lot of questions from people who are purchasing my radius dishes, uh, people that may be new builders uh, working on their first or second guitar and they have questions about what is done with the the top radius and the question always comes in you know how do you handle the fact that you want uh, the domed rim you want a dome top but yet you still need a flat area for the fingerboard to be glued on and um, you also need the correct uh, slope above the sound hole uh, to give you the the proper neck angle so that you have the correct gap at the uh, bridge and saddle location um, to get proper string height, saddle height, uh, and all those things. So there's two different ways that um, I think people most commonly handle the top radius on an acoustic guitar. And one is to radius the entire rim, uh, in a usually in a radius sanding dish. and and also to build the, the top and brace it so that the whole top has a matching radius. And that's great from the perspective that uh, you'll have, you know, a, a, a radius rim, a radius top, everything will fit together nicely, that's great. But then you have the issue that uh, you will have a, a dome here that you have to deal with uh, where the fretboard is going to be glued on and that will need to be flattened out and so you'll have to come back uh, I've seen some people have some uh, a sanding jig or you'll have to just sand and scrape the correct angle and the correct um, the correct sorry the correct angle and uh, and flatten out this area right in here for the for the fretboard so that's one way of doing it the other way uh, and the way that I have always done this is to brace uh, everything pretty much from the top of the sound hole down to the uh, the tail has a radius and then the portion of the top above the sound hole from here from here up is done flat so my upper transverse brace my main um, main brace above the sound hole is is flat and when I prepare the rim, I'm going to radius everything from here down and then everything from uh, the top of the sound hole up is going to be sanded flat. And in order to achieve this, I use a radius sanding dish and a flat sanding board. Now I build all my guitars with a 28 foot top radius. Uh, that's one of the most common top radius uh, used. and the, the method that I'm going to show you um, allows me to consistently achieve uh, the proper neck angle with uh, only minimum tweaking necessary once the top is glued, glued on the body. Um, I can't even remember how I came across this method. Um, when I first started building 15 years ago, I read piles of books. I got my hands on uh, almost every video course that was available at the time. Uh, the internet and YouTube was not really a big thing when I was getting started out. I, I don't think YouTube even existed, uh, although I can't remember. And so I, I picked up my technique from, from these books and from some old video series, and I've kind of combined various techniques, so I'm not even 100% sure where I got this but I have built uh, so far about uh, 150 guitars with this method and I, I find it works very well um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and and show you that uh, the the instrument I've got here is one of my OM bazookis uh, guitar bazooki obviously and and so I have my rim here um, the I use the Kevin Ryan A4 Kerfing on the bottom. I'm using a solid uh, laminated liner on the top and got my own uh, 
double X bracing pattern. Um, still some fine sanding and, and stuff to be done there, clean up before the top gets glued on. Um, so just before I head over to the, the sanding dish and the board, you'll see I've marked the top here. This, um, this line that I put on the top is right between the, the X brace and the, and the upper transverse brace. And I'm going to try and keep this within the, the shot, okay? So here, here there's a little bit of a gap in there. That's my transition point where the top uh, shifts from being radius to flat. And so I've, I've put my, uh, my top on the body here in the approximate, you know, this is approximately the right location. And I've also marked on the rim where that break point is. And that's where I want the transition to take place from the radius rim to the flat rim. So we're going to head over to the, uh, the sanding dish now and I will uh, do a, a little more explaining as to what I'm, what I'm gonna do uh, with the, uh, the sanding dish technique. Okay, so here I am uh, with my radius dish, and I now want to radius everything from that um, the break point uh, to the lower bout. And I don't I don't really want to or need to sand the upper the upper part of the rim. So what I'm going to start by doing, yeah, I've, I've got the the front edge hanging a little bit over the edge of the dish. And I'm just going to start by, by going back and forth like this, um, kind, of, kind of on the lower bout, just to, to get the radius started. And I won't be able to talk while I'm sanding, it'll, it'll just probably be too loud. So I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and uh, do that. Okay. And uh, before starting to sand, I marked my, my liners here with a pencil. And, uh, and I can see where I've started sanding them down. When I glued the liners in, they were glued a little bit proud of the side. And so as I go through the sanding process, the liners are going to be brought down um, flush in most areas. Uh, they may still be a little bit proud in the waist, but that's fine. They're, they're over a quarter inch thick, so I got lots of uh, thickness there to glue my top to. Um, so I can see I've already, I've started sanding in here. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep going. I wanna get, get it down to, the, down to the tail block. Okay, so I've started uh, started touching the, the tail block here. Um, just off camera here, I have my hand plane, and I'm actually just going to go take the hand plane and just hit the hit the spots that are are currently contacting the sandpaper. Just bring that down. It'll just I, I alternate between the dish and and the hand plane just to speed up the process a bit. Especially if you're using solid liners, there's just a little more effort uh, involved in the sanding. Put it back on camera as best as I can here. This is the, the portion that's been sanded so far. I just, just work that down just a little bit. This will just speed up, speed up what I have to do. Okay, and I, I carry on until I've got that, the tail block and this lower bout section fully sanded. Okay, I've, uh, there we have it. I've now, I've now sanded the tail block. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and actually draw pencil lines um, back just to make sure that I have I have got everything that I wanted to as far as the sanding and I think I, I think I do always good to double check yeah and so oh there's a, a little bit right here I still need to get a little bit in there
All right, that looks that looks good. I'm gonna grab my brush. It's always good to brush or vacuum your your sandpaper off. It'll just uh, help it work more efficiently. I do recommend wearing a dust mask for this. I'm just uh, not wearing mine while I shoot this video, so I can talk to you. Okay. So now. Uh, from approximately this, this midway point here is now radius uh, in the 28 foot dish, but we want to extend that radius now up to our break point. Now this is where the technique gets a little interesting. I'm not sure of any other builders who do it quite this way, but it works for me. And um, you can see here I use this uh, this upside down L-shaped neck block, okay? And basically the, the flat portion of the top is going to extend to the end of my neck block. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I, I have the guitar on the dish and I have the front part, the front part in here is hanging over the edge of the dish. And now to sand, I am going to move the guitar back and forth so it is actually coming off the dish going back onto the dish and I'm stopping uh, pretty much right at the end of that neck block which is my my break now uh, just a word of caution if you use uh, regular top liners such as a triangular liner or the Kevin Ryan a4 kerfing like I've used around the bottom of this and you try this technique uh, you're very likely to chip out some of your liners. Uh, if you've worked with the A4 liners, you know they're pretty delicate to begin with, uh, but pulling them off the edge of a dish like this um, may cause you some problems. So it's, it's good just to pay attention, uh, check regularly to make sure you're not just tearing all the liners uh, out of your rim, because you'll have to put, put them back in later. I have been using the solid liners for a few years now, and uh, before that used reverse kerf liners and never had any issues uh, when using this technique. So I'm going to go ahead now and um, continue with the sanding and I will, I will do some of this off camera and I will, uh, I will get the hand plane out and uh, touch up a few things but I'll, I'll check back in once I've completed this stage of the sanding uh, so you can see uh, what I'm going for. Um, what I'm looking to achieve at this point in the sanding process. Okay, I just want to check in here. I'm about halfway through uh, sanding the radius into the top, and I just wanted to point out, um, you know, as I'm, I'm sanding this, I'm moving, it, I'm moving it back and forth. I am not stopping at the exact break point every time. Sometimes I go a little bit past it, sometimes I'm stopping a little bit short of it. Um, I just I don't want to I don't want to stop and and do any sanding, uh, you know, especially no back and forth, um, with with the dish hanging off the edge like this, or you will uh, cut a groove um, into the upper bout, which you may not be able to get out at a later point. Um, often I will I will um, go a little bit past the break point because the from the break point up to the the neck, neck, the end, of, or the the neck block, the edge of the top here. That is going to get sanded again. Um, you'll see in the next step when we flatten it out. So if there's if there's any little bit of marks or grooves or whatever in that upper part, that's all going to be removed in the next step. So I just continue. <laughs> you want to be kind of gentle at the same time, but. Um, I've now, I've now achieved um, on this side. It's looking pretty good. This side still needs a little bit more uh, in the waist area, depending on um, how consistent you were with the height of the liners. Uh, will kind of dictate this, but you just you got to check regularly, see where you need to keep sanding. I should have mentioned that uh, when I started, uh, the the top rim was flat. Um, the, the top edge of my sides is flat, the liners were put in um, level and even, and I had, I had actually sanded the whole thing flat on a flat sanding board um, to make sure I started with a, an even surface. 
but I'm just going to go ahead and give a little more sanding. Uh, the liners are now um, coming down to the sides. They're still a little bit proud. Like I said, that's that's okay. I'm not going to be uh, super concerned if they're they're high. The liners are a little bit higher than the side. That all gets taken out in the binding process anyway. Okay, so I have done uh, this portion of the top sanding. Um, you won't be able to see it. Uh, I don't know if I can get it. It won't, it won't show up on the camera, but everything from my break point, which is where this arrow is, uh, right here, um, down to the tail block, now has the 28 foot radius. And, you know, with a 28 foot radius dish, it doesn't matter where you're sanding in the dish, as long as you're, um, you're sanding in the dish, it will put that, that 28 foot radius on it. Again, being careful, uh, if you're hanging the guitar over the edge, not to, to wiggle it back or forth or something that could wear a groove into it. I'm sure there's, there's some builders out there who may um, take issue with this technique or say it's not proper, but it has worked very well for me. And like I said, it allows me to consistently achieve um, what I'm looking for as far as proper neck angle and that sort of thing. So we're gonna move to the flat sanding board now and I will uh, explain the, the next step at that point. All right, so um, here I am with my, my flat sanding board, or in this case, I have my workbench. I've checked my workbench for flatness. Um, I know it's flat, so what I've done is just taken this piece of uh, sandpaper. It's a, a roll of 50 grit sandpaper. I've been using the same piece for 15 years. Uh, 150 guitars and it's just it's broken in nicely it works it works great for this and I also have this uh, stick that you see here and this stick is seven and a half millimeters thick two centimeters wide and this is the stick that is going to give me the proper neck angle now I use the same uh, stick no matter what model I'm building and I build everything from a three-quarter size guitar up to a full jumbo uh, this is an OM, and now that I have the, the radius down here, I'm just working to flatten the upper portion. And so I'm just going to prop the guitar so that the, the stick here um, is underneath the, the tail block, okay? So I just rest. Um, rest the stick under the tail block. The width of the stick is not critical, although if it's longer, it tends to stay in place better. I put my left hand under the, the back of the guitar, and I'll actually take my, my glove off on this side, and I can feel that the, the stick is in the proper place under the tail block. Now, I just wiggle the front of the guitar back and forth. And I just continue with this until I've, I've sanded the upper, the upper part of the guitar. Now I've marked, um, everything is marked with a pencil line. And I know that once I get to the end of my block, um, that, is the, that is the break point. The upper transverse brace butts up against my, my block. And so just a little bit beyond that is where I want the transition to take place. So if I, if I just sand until I get to the end of my pencil marks, I know I'll be doing well or I'll, I'll be where I need to be. And I'm just always checking to make sure the stick is under the, the tail block. It does tend to slip out once in a while. That's no trouble, just reposition it and carry on. And I will sand. I'll sand for a while and then I just shift the guitar a little bit to the left so that I'm using uh, just clean portions of the sandpaper. And I continue on until I've, I've sanded the upper part flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I'll, I'll check in once that's complete. Okay, so here I am. Uh, just gonna readjust the camera. Okay, so I now have my, my flat, uh, 
flat part sanded into the upper bout here. Uh, all my pencil marks are gone right to the end of the block. Here's my break point right here. The flat uh, cross sanding scratches extend right there. Uh, same on both sides, it's looking really good. Um, sometimes you may find that uh, the, the flat part extends a little bit beyond where you want it to. I see that that's the case a little bit here. Uh, I've got some, some cross sanding scratches uh, from the flat board a little bit past where I want them, but that's okay. I just go, I'm going to go back to the dish and I'm just going to do a little bit of sanding in the dish to, to clean that up in there mainly just using pull strokes um, until I, I I want to see that the the break point between the the 28 foot radius scratches and the crossway flat scratches I want to see the break point is, is right in around that arrow right where I want it and if I've done everything correctly then when I go to put my top on the top should sit nicely on the rim I shouldn't have to force it down you know if there's a big gap anywhere uh, you know in the waist or up here or anything uh, you've probably done something wrong um, because the the top or the rim should match now what I've done in bracing the top again everything from the upper transverse brace down is radius everything above it is flat and the rim now matches the top so um, I'm gonna go ahead and just clean this up a bit in the dish I'll do a follow-up video just to, once the, the top is on this instrument, um, I'll just show you how I fine-tune the neck angle and what I'm looking for at that point. But uh, now I just, I'm going to go back and there's a bunch of uh, cleanup and, and little details. i got to slot the, uh, the neck block here for my truss rod access, which I do through the sound hole. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and then I just fit my top the way, you, way I, I regularly would. And that's uh, all you need to do if you're you're matching this method. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them. I'll do my best to uh, to keep up and respond. If you need radius dishes, um, flat uh, sandpaper, you can go to my website CanadianLuthierSupply.com, and uh, I'm the the largest manufacturer of radius dishes. Uh, right now on the on the market I make hundreds of them every year and uh, they're they're top quality dishes as you can see from the one in my video they're made from laminated uh, blanks MDF and plywood laminations I I put together myself uh, the dishes are trimmed with protective edging and the sandpaper you've seen me use here is an industrial grade abrasive it's far different than uh, the the little sheets of sandpaper you may buy for your wood sanding and and uh, that we all use for the other parts of the guitar sanding but the sandpaper is coated with a uh, anti-static coating among other things and like I said it, it's 50 grit but once the paper is broken in um, it, it takes on more like a, a 70 grit and it will just hold that sharpness uh, pretty much indefinitely um, like I said, 15 years and counting, 150 instruments on this uh, this one piece of sandpaper here. So I I can uh, I can provide any of those things if you're interested. And uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my my channel or YouTube channels, and uh, I'll follow up with this video uh, with a with another one in a in a couple days. Thanks for watching.